Live Earth Farm started in 1996 and is located in the beautiful Pajaro Valley here on the central coast of California. We grow over 50 different crops. We have a very diverse cropping system, of orchards, perennials, and annuals. This farm is located in an area where nature is still really thriving. What is really important component to our farm is the CSA and it's our education program. All the, the kids that come to the farm with their families to create a connection between food, people, and land, I think is important. We did a study on small organic farms up in Northern California, where we were looking to see whether birds were providing significant services. And so we placed cabbage looper caterpillars out on kale leaves. And what we found was that the pests that were placed near hedgerows or other shrubby uncultivated habitat were more likely to be eaten by birds. Up to 80% of the caterpillars had been consumed by birds. We really focused on creating hedgerows that bring the native vegetation closer to the fields and kind of crisscross in the fields in order to bring a lot of the services of you know, birds or the predatory insects and even snakes. And so we're always trying to understand how we can best integrate and work together with the wildlife and the native vegetation that's around us. It means that it's less intensive, but I think it's worth the trade-off. The hedgerows have helped us really reduce our pest control practices. We don't have to apply any products that we used to apply. Even, you know, organically approved products are still very, very expensive. So we are really operating right now in a system where we don't even have to think about the aphid control. And we don't really have caterpillars. <laughs> We can pay more attention to maintaining the system rather than reacting to problems. And that's really nice. You know, it's more about making sure that there's more of a balance all the time. I was also interested in seeing what the birds were doing in areas where we have grasslands right next to corn and soybean fields. So I collected fecal samples from the birds and we used DNA tests to figure out the birds had been eating northern corn rootworm, which can cause a lot of damage to corn crops. But they weren't eating any really serious soybean pests in that year. I continued the study another year and this time we did find that they were consuming soybean pests. 53% of the the song sparrows that we had tested had actually eaten Japanese beetles. I have to go back. The hedgerows, you know, we always were worried that they're attracting birds that then will also feed on our crops. And we are really not any more worried about that. I mean, in the strawberries, we've never really had any bird damage to speak of. And I bet they're probably doing more good than they're creating harm. You know, the fact that we don't have a lot of caterpillars in the broccoli and cauliflower could be because we have a lot of birds. <laughs> and I think a lot of these more permanent habitat systems are really sequestering carbon. We did research in Kenya on coffee farms and found that pests were much more likely to be eaten closer to these forest fragments at the edges of the farm. So whether it's a situation where we've got coffee beans being grown surrounded by remnants of forest, or if it's a situation where we have corn and soybeans that are surrounded by grassland or row crops that are surrounded by hedgerows, again and again, we see the same pattern. This habitat at the edges of the, the fields along the field margins is really increasing the probability that you're going to see pest control by birds. It's important to have fields that are efficiently farmed, but that doesn't mean that you have to clear areas that are not really part of the production of the farm. We have a riparian corridor along Green Valley Creek, which we want to create a buffer so we don't have water quality issues. Being a farmer is really to being a steward of many things. The environment balanced with the economics and the social element of farm workers and their health. There's so much that farmers can do and it really doesn't have to be a lot. It's okay to start small, so if that's just keeping remnant hedgerows along the edges of your field instead of clearing them out, that's great. If you can plant native shrubs and trees along the edges of your field, that's even better. You can put up nest boxes, you can put up perches for raptors and even for songbirds, and that's going to help draw them into the field. If we bring in the birds, we potentially can have 
a great situation for the farmers where they're providing this free pest control service, but it's also great for the birds as well when you're providing them that habitat. There's nothing more beautiful to see, like the transitions that happen here. Like in the spring, of course, our farm is just filled with songbirds. So it's rare that we see these great win-win scenarios. And this is something that if we continue to research, we can figure out how to maximize the benefit both to birds and to farmers at the same time.